Great. Okay, guys, we are rolling into another episode of the Candace Owens Show, and I am so honored to be sitting across from possibly one of the only remaining comedians left, seeing as the left has tackled comedy. Terrence K. Williams, welcome to the Candace Owens Show. Hey, thank you for having me. It's so great to have you. <laughs> yeah, it's We've been tried a long to time. do this a while ago, but you got into a car accident. Yes, I got into a car accident. It on was the at, way to come see me. On the way to come see you. <laughs> exactly. So we're uh, we're actually investigating the whole thing, and you are involved in the investigation because something's not adding up, okay? <laughs> so I get into a car wreck coming to see you, and I wasn't invited to your wedding. So, oh yeah, I threw it out there. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. We have yes. to edit this portion out. <laughs> <laughs> so anything you say can be held against you in a court of law. I know. During I'm gonna this be, podcast. I'm going to be very careful here. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about that. So you got into a car accident and it was, it seemed when we first got the news, yeah. you, you were headed, we had the Black Leadership Summit in DC. Yes. And you were headed and I, it sounded like it was like a little, a little accident and then yeah. it ended up being very serious. And yeah, you injured yeah. your neck. Yeah, so, um, and I think it was a black history event at the White House mm-hmm. that, we were, that we were going to, yeah. So I was on my way to that. Uh, I didn't even make it to my hotel. As soon as I got off, as uh, soon as I got off the plane and ordered my uh, car service ride, my driver, then I'm on Twitter talking crap, you know, me, <laughs> getting myself in trouble. And next minute I know, I, I'm i in a wreck. It happens, it happens so quick. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I fractured, uh, my C4, C5, C6, all that stuff. So, um, they put a, a double, uh, a double level metal fusion in. Um, I still have a lot of back pain. I still do have pain, but I'm not complaining because I'm alive. Thank God. Cause some people don't make it out of those car wrecks, mm-hmm. especially after you fracture your, uh, cervical spine. So I'm just thankful I'm alive. Were you buckled up? Yes, I was buckled up. Thank goodness. But the I, car went whoop, 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 whoop. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, you know, I was in an Uber accident too. And yeah. I, I mean, mine wasn't, fortunately, mine wasn't too bad. And I got out Thank of the God. Uber and caught, you know, caught another ride. Um, But I have this weird thing that I always put on my seatbelt when I'm driving. But if I'm yeah. in Uber, sometimes I feel like I'm invincible. Yeah. And I forget to buckle up. Like exactly. I'm just like, whatever. And people don't realize yeah. that so many accidents happen in Uber rides. So yeah. you have to be safe. You, How long were you in the hosp- hospitalized for? So I was in a hospital in Baltimore. I was in that hospital for about six or seven days. Went a few days without eating because I was, you know, I couldn't move. So they stabilized my neck. And I'm from Texas. Well, I live in Texas, so I didn't want to have surgery in a city I didn't live in. So they stabilized my neck so I can have surgery in uh, in in Texas. So uh, I had that surgery on March eighth, and um, I was in a neck brace for about three months. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it was hard. It was hard. But I mean, Lord Jesus, it was hard Yeah. because I'm so used to moving around, you know, doing and I was on tour. Also, we we had about 30 dates coming, like 30 theaters booked and all that was just canceled because of my uh, because of the wreck. So I was like, oh, God, I was like, can I perform in a wheelchair? Like, can I still go? Like, I still wanted to go. It must but, be hard to stay positive in a oh, situation yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, I was sick. About two and a half years ago, and I was bedridden for a couple of months. Yeah. And the amount, I mean, it's so easy to become depressed. It's yeah. just so, when you remain idle, it is so easy to become depressed. Exactly. So I can't imagine what you went through when your whole, your entire career is you running uh, yeah. around, making jokes, making people feel better, yes. and suddenly you're in a hospital bed. Exactly. And then the medicine they put you on, oh my goodness, it don't make it any better. You know, especially they had me on so. I mean, I've been I was on so much pain meds. Mm. It was some of, and that medicine is not good for you. No, it, oh, it's bad. Cause I'm gonna tell you, some of that stuff had me feeling like I was in the uh, in the world of Walt Disney. <laughs> 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 Every morning, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> I got to get off of this stuff. <laughs> you know what? I mean, you're making a joke, but this, yeah, this is how no. people end up addicted to pills. Yes. And that's and that's how people are addicted to pills. And um uh, and and I do believe some of these these doctors, I believe they are working with. I'm gonna tell you, I had a doctor. I'm not gonna name his name. I had plenty of doctors, but they gave me an option. Do I want this pill or this pill? This pill's a little higher. You could be addicted to this one. They said that? Yeah, yeah. We we try to keep people off of these. We normally don't give people these, but since your situation, 
you can have it if you want. So I'll give you the option which one you want. And I almost said, I want the one that's going to have me the highest on the highest because I was taking all it. No, I'm just being real with yeah. you. And like something in my body went, ooh, yes, thank you, Jesus. But I said, no, then something clicked in me. D- don't you do it. Mm. I said, no, nah, I'm not going to take that. I'm going to take the one that's. That's non-addictive, mm. you know, that's less addictive, I mean. Right. So, yeah. And your circumstance yeah. is a car accident, but people yeah. are offered pills and exactly. uh, that are for lesser exactly. lesser moments of tragedy. And, yes. And, and I remember I always tell people the story of like when I, I I'm a person that's, I, I hate taking pills, but the first time I got offered a pill, I'll tell mm-hmm. you the story. I was 18 years old. I had broken up with my high school boyfriend. I was in college and this breakup, you know, how everything just feels raw yeah. when you're 18, yeah. like, oh, I'm never going to live again. So yeah. I was absolutely depressed, devastated, cried all night in college. And my dad actually got worried about me because I was just like on the brink, you know? Yeah. And really, it's just teenage drama. Exactly. So my dad picked me up in the middle of the night in Rhode Island, drove me all the way back home, and he had never seen me so sad. So the next day we went to the doctor and um, the doctor said to me, here's a pill. It'll make you feel better about a breakup. Yeah. Offered me Xanax. For a breakup? For a breakup. I got offered Xanax and I took it. I took, so I took the pills. Um, and, uh, I think I took it for two days, went back to college. I obviously had to go to class. And when I got to, to campus, one of my girlfriends came to my dorm and I was, I told her, Oh, look, like I have these pills now because I can't get over this breakup. And she asked me such an important question. She said, Candace, why are you taking those pills? And I said, because I'm sad. She said, why are you sad? I said, because me and -and so-and-so broke up. And she said, if you can answer the question about why you're sad, you don't need a pill. That's a human human emotion. Exactly. Feel that. And it changed my life forever. And I threw them all in the garbage. Like, yeah. They gave you a pill for a breakup. Sad. You know, a lot of people do commit suicides (laughs) over breakups. Mm -hmm. You do not need a pill for a breakup. If you want to get over your ex, get another man. (laughs) <laughs> get another woman. That's the quickest way to get over somebody. <laughs> That's the quickest way. I, you know, That's the quickest way. I mean, it really, what it's I'm about, I actually think that a lot of these pills, and we're probably going to get in trouble here, but a lot of these pills are all about numbing emotions. And that's why yes. it was so important when she said, if you know why you're sad, yeah. that's called the human emotion. And the problem is, is when you keep putting off that emotion, yeah. you don't remember what it is like to have any emotion. So when you actually experience, you know, sadness, happiness, whatever it is, you get overwhelmed. Yes. And and we have to do better at having people acknowledge, like, you are a human being. Exactly. And what comes with that sometimes is a little bit of emotion. Yes. So I'm glad to see you're back on your feet and you're back to getting in trouble on Twitter. Oh, yes. I'm always in trouble. And, my, and so, but I promise I'm going to keep it PG-13. I promise. And anything I say does not have anything to do with Candace Owens or Prager U. <laughs> this anything that comes out of my mouth, it's me. Thank so you. I want to put that on the table. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, why are you always in trouble on Twitter? Well, I'm always in trouble because I really shouldn't be in trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should never be. I mean, I have the freedom of speech. I just speak my mind. I say what it is and how it is. See, but people want me to sugarcoat things. But I never worked for the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. Never worked at a candy store. So I'm not sugarcoating nothing, okay, at all. So, but we live in a, we are living in a world today that you cannot say this. You can't say that. You have to be careful because you might hurt someone's feelings. Yeah. And me, I say what I want. I mean... I'm a grown man. That's, I mean, this this yeah. really is the death yeah. of comedy. Exactly. What we're seeing. I went, the, yeah. If you go back and you watch any of the stand-up pieces from the 1990s, none of it would be able to exist today. Exactly. Because comedians were actually funny and they were taking risks and they were offending everybody. I mean, exactly. part of being a comedian is being offensive. Exactly. Um, and at the end of the day, when they go around and they offend everybody, everyone kind of feels a little bit better about themselves yes. at the end because you're like, ah, we're, yes. you know, it's, it's all for naught, you know? Exactly. And that's why I get big props to Dave Chappelle because he keeps, he don't care. And that's how it should be. You know, uh, com- I mean, it's a comedian like on Twitter. You know, people are my, somebody, some check fact or some one of them check fact companies. They try to check fact my joke. How can you check fact a joke? <laughs> it's a joke. That's, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, I said, that's really funny. I said, what? They check fact and jokes. Right. Right. No, you're. <laughs> so y'all didn't label my joke as fake news. <laughs> How do you label a joke as fake? It's a joke. 
Oh my goodness. It's like knock knock, who's there? Yes. Me. They're like, no, me me was actually not yeah, there. Yeah, me was actually not there. You can't say that. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't say that. That's yes. so funny. So I mean, that's what I'm dealing with. I mean, it, it it's crazy. It's like I can't and some sometimes I think to myself, oh man, why, why don't I just do something else? You know, why don't I just go, you know, I, why don't I just stop doing comedy? Why don't I just stop speaking? I mean, you can't say nothing, you get in trouble. I get tired of being in trouble, being banned and being censored. It's like, oh God, but I can't stop the fight. The right. fight goes on. So you're gonna be in trouble when they pull up your tweets 13 years from now. Yes, 13. Yes, and I'm y'all gonna find something. <laughs> y'all gonna find a whole lot. So y'all better start looking now because it's a lot. Well, we'd like to give you this opportunity yeah. to apologize for your tweets 13 years ago now. Would you? Uh yeah. So I would like to never apologize. What? To <laughs> That's not how this goes. <laughs> yes. You wanna try again? Oh no, I'm not apologizing to nobody. I'll show you how it works. No. I was a different person 13 years ago. I, I am horrified. I did not realize my own white privilege at that time. And I'd like to apologize to my friends, my yeah. family, and my fans. And thank you for allowing me to grow as a human being. That was so touching. <laughs> and we don't forgive you. Because as soon as you apologize, they don't forgive you and they use it against you. 110%. percent That is yes. so true. They don't care. They they just want they just want to see you get on yep. your knees and mm-hmm. and and beg yep. for your life back and then they exactly. go actually you can't have your life back yes. we just wanted to see you beg and you know what's crazy half of these people they want you to apologize for your past and things that that you said but they people don't the same people still haven't apologized for lying to their mama still <laughs> haven't apologized for cheating on their spouse but you want me to apologize to you mm. to. So somebody on Twitter, are you serious for something that I did? Now, what happened to people growing and growing up, you know? Like, you want to dig back, you know, in the past? Like, this is so stupid. Well, yeah. they're they're lucky because they lived in a generation where there was no Twitter and Facebook exactly. and all of these things to trap all of the, the bad ideas that you yeah. had as you were growing up. Mm-hmm. So they've, they've forgiven themselves. They simply don't remember it. Nothing captured the things that they said. Yeah. And we don't, they don't understand that they're holding people to an unrealistic standard. And that was sort of my sympathy with the Kyle Kashuv scandal. Yeah, you know? yeah, I know yeah. a lot of people, so for those of you that are listening, Kyle Kashuv uh, was a kid, a student white student who had gotten into Harvard. Um, he was a Parkland shooting survivor. Mm-hmm. A Parkland shoot, shooting survivor. Yes, shooter yes. survivor? Yes. Um, and uh, he, on a Game Boy, I think, right, where they have those chats. Yeah. I sound like really ignorant about gaming. I am. <laughs> they have those yeah. chats, said the N-word like a thousand times, or I'm, I'm being dramatic here, yeah. but... And somebody, some kid screenshot it and he did it when he was 15, I think. They screenshot it and then they made a scandal of it because now he's sort of in the public and Harvard revoked um, his his, um, acceptance letter. What did you think about that when it happened? They, you know, this is my thing here. With the N word, I I really don't care. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care if a white person called me an N-word or his spent. Matter of fact, people use it today like they're saying, what's up, bro? Mm-hmm. What's up, my what's up, my N-word? Because I can't say the real word on here, can I? Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. But what's up, my N-word? <laughs> um, but this is my thing, though. You know, the what they say, the word, it, the, the, it's so much, the word, it, it's just so much history behind it. Okay, then we use it, the black community use that word every day. And I don't think the boy is racist. And the way he was using it, you could tell he was just being childish. Yeah. I mean, uh, racist people don't even use it that much. Well, so, I actually, you know, right. you know, I know, I yeah, actually recall. You, you, if you look at, if you look at the, at at the whatever he, what was it, like a message or whatever? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you look at it, you can tell it was, it was just childish. Mm-hmm. He was just being childish. And a lot of people, come on now, get over it. It was a long time ago. Forgive the boy. Right. He's young. Well, I think what it's a scary idea to say that something you do when you're 15 years old yeah. ruins the rest of your life. But you know what's funny? Um, Bill Maher. Uh, 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 yes. Bill Maher called his set. Bill, Bill Maher used the word on his show. Mm-hmm. He called his, he, he said he's, you know, Tommy, he's a house and N word or whatever, da, da, da. Well, they didn't let, uh, HBO did not let him go. Matter of fact, you know what they did? They sent Ice Cube on the show and other people to 
give him a chance to apologize and to teach him a lesson mm -hmm. to explain to him why it's such a bad word and why he shouldn't use it. Mm -hmm. Now we forgive you. So we're going to send these black people on the show to give you a to give you a lesson to teach you something. You know, so you can understand. And he's a grown man. Be yeah, because clearly you don't understand. You're over 40 years old and you don't understand. But this young teenager, he understands and he know better. Okay? So he, he, matter of fact, we don't want him at the, we don't want him going to our colleges. Matter of fact, no, people are talking about no colleges should, should, uh, should accept him. No one should hire him. This is a young boy. Y'all yeah. not going to give him a chance to grow? And to, to be more mature and, I mean, come on. Yeah, you know, it, it's actually funny that you're saying that because, first off, a couple of things. A, I don't think Bill Maher's a racist. Obviously, he's not. He's got, yeah. he exclusively likes black women, right? Yeah. So, like, he, if he's a racist, he's a, he's a weird racist, yeah. right? Um, and it was right for that situation to be mm -hmm. forgiven. But it does seem that it only works one way. And um, I, I clearly, I don't think Kyle Kashuf is a racist. And I think yeah. that this is a bad idea to start, try to trap children into their past and their histories when they're 15 years old. They exactly. don't have a past or a history, really. And the last thing is the irony of Harvard, yeah. right? Harvard, <laughs> look at their their history. Exactly. They have a history. They they were racist. They had a racist, systemic racism in Harvard. Exactly. We've all forgiven that and they're the top institution in, mm -hmm. in the nation, right? Yeah. This was Harvard during the progressive era. They put a cap on how many Jews they would even allow to go to their school because they were racist towards Jews. They were racist towards other races. And I'm just thinking it's incredible that everybody can forgive themselves, yeah. but nobody has it in their heart um, to forgive a young kid. And, and exactly. that, that to me is dangerous because a world without forgiveness is a very, very, very dangerous world to be in because yeah. everybody has to pretend to be perfect. Exactly. And nobody on this earth is perfect and everybody's learning, especially a child. Yes. So, I mean, that that's sort of where we're at. And, and unfortunately, in this vitriolic place that we're yeah. in, where everybody's looking for racism, yeah. right? And, <laughs> it I mean, feeds the beast. Exactly. He typed the word, he typed the N-word like a hundred times. Okay. And if, I don't know why black people are mad. If we claim not to be the N-word, then why are you mad? Right. You know, anybody can be the N-word. You know, I call, listen, I don't use the word no more, but I used to, I used to call white people, look at that stupid N-word right there. I stop doing that. Hispanics, look at that stupid, that his, <laughs> Asian, that, what a stupid are you? <laughs> so I used to call everybody N-word. I am an equal opportunity racist. I call, <laughs> it, everybody is an N-word to me, okay? I'm just saying, if you do something stupid, you N-word, you just a, I don't care. Well, let's, let's actually talk about real racism because there there was yeah. some recently. Um, and the left tried to starve black people. They've had a lot of protests, they've had a lot of boycotts, but recently they did one that is really unforgivable. They demanded that we boycott Chick-fil-A. <sighs> this is a hard topic to talk about. No, they wanted us to boycott chicken. No, this was not no, this one's a hard one for me because No, 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 it's okay. <sighs> You don't understand <laughs> that fried chicken has never done nothing to nobody. And the fact that they want to ban fried chicken, the black community has survived because of fried chicken. And they want to ban it. So y'all trying to starve black people now? <laughs> y'all know we like fried chicken. It's what they did, and seriously, come on I mean, now. Just like, banned chicken. As soon as I saw it, yeah. as soon as I saw it, I said, "Well, that one's not gonna <laughs> stick." Okay? Oh, it's not. Oh, it's not gonna stick. We, we all have to. Yes. We have to draw fine lines yes. in the sand, yes. and that was a line. I said, yes. "Okay, okay, stop telling people to boycott chicken." Exactly. Okay? Leave Chick Fil A alone. Yeah, okay, I don't care. But I'm telling you right now, a lot of black people haven't said anything about it. Because people just talking, but if it was real and they really started talking about, they had a bill to ban fried chicken, <laughs> the black community will rise up. I'm telling you, we'll be marching. We'll be marching on DC. I mean, it'll be serious. ASAP. 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 And let me ASAP. tell you something. They're close because the Green New Deal wanted yeah. to ban cows, right? If cows, cows first. All right, fine. Take the beef. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. But when you when they start talking about when that green new deal starts talking about banning chicken, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna be next level. Exactly. AOC is gonna have a record because yes. it's just not like, gonna work. What they expect us? What do they expect us to eat? I'm not eating <laughs> no grass. I'm not a rabbit. I want meat. 
I want chicken. I want double cheeseburgers, fried fried chicken, <laughs> hog mog, mashed potatoes, black eyed peas, collard greens, and please put bacon grease in my collard greens. You are taking that is the best. You're taking Greta Thunberg's future away from her, and I can't allow this. I could be on the other side of the side of the. <laughs> no, she's taking away my future. <laughs> okay, <laughs> she's taking away my future. Okay, first of all. You got it made. She said, I could be on the other side of the ocean. At your age, I didn't even know what an ocean was. <laughs> you got it made. You on the other side of the ocean. I only know what it I, I only know what it's like being on the other side of the hood. But you on the <laughs> other side of the ocean and you don't have a life? Girl, bye. Come on now. I have actually called out on my Twitter feed uh the climate strike as being Probably the most pretentious, yes. overprivileged thing that I have ever seen, Listen. ever. I mean, th these are people are super yes. privileged and so out of touch the way that the rest of the people, like, if you have the time, the time yes. to go and, and protest and the climate strike yeah. while everything that you have as a part of Poor, a part of this climate strike is not mm. eco-friendly, by the way. They've got like exactly. plastic blow-ups, they're leaving trash on the floor, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And you are just, you're remarkably privileged. Exactly. And I'm like, are they aware of the fact that every 10 years, there's a new way they yes. like When I was in school, it was Al Gore. He told us that the ice caps were melting and we had 10 years left to live. Mm -hmm. And the polar bears were all going to drown, which I was like, polar bears aren't the nicest animals, yeah. you know? And then we had 10 years before that, they had the acid rain stuff. Yeah. They, I mean, they had global cooling, I think, 10 years before that. I mean, I might be getting which, you know, fanatically yes. end of world apocalypse thing that they were saying. Yes. But these, it happens every 10 years. They can't stop the world from ending. They can't. <laughs> you can't stop it. But climate change, I'm not, I don't care about climate change. I'm still trying to figure out how to get my AC working in the house. Right. <laughs> you think I'm about to worry about climate change? It's not going to stick. It's another it's one that gonna, I'm like, mm, It's not going to stick. It's just not. You go around and, and people have real problems. You go yes. around with the projects and people are trying to figure out how to get food on the table. Yes. And you're talking about saying. Pe people trying to get new AC units. Mm -hmm. They're not worried about climate change. They're not about to go out to the streets and protest about climate change. People got bigger problems than to worry about climate change. Mm -hmm. People are out here starving, and now they're trying to ban hamburgers. They're trying to ban <laughs> all the food that's affordable. All the affordable food. Y'all know Y'all know the pope. Y'all know the, the average American cannot afford to eat grapes and strawberries and salad every day. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. People can't afford Being a vegan is expensive. <laughs> You know how hard it is to find? I mean, my goodness. <laughs> They're taking away the plastic straws, Terrence. Taking away the... Listen, I'm out the... That's why I, I'm in... Oh God, I hate California. I, mean, <laughs> I, I hate it and I love it. But I'm drinking out of a plastic straw at a restaurant uh, yesterday. And I mean, it's... They, it's nothing that's coming up in the straw. Because th they rip in the in, in the drink. And it and it tastes. Oh, and you it, mean you you had a plastic um a pla replacement? No, 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 not a plastic straw. Excuse me, I had a, a paper straw. Mm. I was drinking out of a paper the straw. melt in your mouth straws. It was melting in my mm. mouth. It gives you so. So I now, you so have to now drink I'm your... suing the restaurant because <laughs> I no because no because I the plastic because the the. I, the tissue is in my is in my body now, <laughs> so and I've been being very I've been very sick lately ever since. So I'm actually suing the restaurant because I swallowed that 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 paper straw. You know, Terrence, so, I'm, I'm just gonna play devil's advocate here, but the turtles are choking. Yes, <laughs> on the plastic straws. So yeah, exactly. I mean, can't you sacrifice your stomach to save one turtle? No, that turtle can die for all I care. <laughs> Prager you and Candace Owen uh, strongly disavows and condemns these comments against <laughs> the turtles. Strongly disavow. My listen, my life is more important is more important than a turtle's life, okay? I'm just saying right now, you know, the human life is one of the I mean, it's y'all, we gotta take care of ourselves, okay? <laughs> That's why we got to eat as many cheeseburgers and fried chicken as we can. <laughs> we got to take care of ourselves, okay? You know, you're right. If you said, yes. if you said any of my this body, stuff. My body, my cholesterol. <laughs> you can't tell me what to eat. I don't need no guideline, okay? I want to die happy.
Okay. My body, my choice. My body, my choice. I hear you. I hear you. You know, we have this conversation and we can make all of these jokes and people will splice this up and it'll turn into something ugly. And and it sort of points to a larger problem where you can't be funny anymore. Like this, no. this is, I actually think that the left is giving us so much material right now. Yeah. I'm like, how is there not a Saturday Night Live exactly. for conservatives? Because they're the ones that are hilarious. They're, yes. Everything that they're doing is hilarious. And yet when you mock them, they can't take a joke. Nobody can take a joke. Nobody can forgive anybody. Nobody knows how to laugh at themselves. Exactly. Which is almost the most important thing, being able to not take yourself so seriously. And I feel like the one thing the black community always had was humor. Like exactly. the, the best comedians, the funniest comedians. Yes. That was our thing. Exactly. And we're allowing these, these, you know, the different cults of leftism exactly. to strip something that was actually always ours. Exactly. Taking away Kevin Hart's uh, opportunity to host the Emmys. It was Kevin yeah, Hart, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I so mean, stupid. And, so stupid. And I'm like, do you realize they're taking away one thing that made us happy and in turn they take saying away to us stuff that we have to people. be anger, angry about. So they say you don't get to be funny anymore, but you're allowed to be angry. Here's a, a, a ton of different things you could be angry about. Yes. Where our perspective used to be, look at all of these different things that we can laugh and mock. Exactly. And it's, it's just interesting that the black community doesn't realize that. And I'm like, guys, we used to be the people that were would find joy in, in the worst situations. We would exactly. mock and, and think things were funny and we're allowing them to shut that down. Exactly. Blacks and Jews are some of the most funniest people out there. It's true. Especially in Hollywood. Like the best comedians are blacks and Jews. But now it's like, you can't say anything. You can't say that. Oh no, that's not okay. Like this is what we do. Like, I mean, laughter and l laughter is a medicine for me. It's a medicine. Laughter has gotten me through so many things. Pretty sure laughter has gotten you through, through through some things. Laughter is medicine, but now they don't want us to laugh. They rather us take a, a pill, you know, than than to use medicine as a laughter. They rather, I mean, do you want me to be addicted to some drugs, mm -hmm. or do you want me to laugh, make jokes, because that's how I'm gonna get through this pain. Right. I totally agree. Yeah. And I asked you a question before in the green room. I said, if Actually, black all of Black America woke up, right? And because we both have the same viewpoint that mm -hmm. in in through different channels, the left is is really harming Black America. These leftists and mm -hmm. everything that they're trying to get us upset about is actually harming us. But if we fixed everything, and when I say fix everything, I mean if we said, okay, everyone on, in Black America wakes up and they realize um, that a lot of stuff is being taken away from us, what would be the problems that Black America had to champion in a, like within our own community? What do we have to fix about ourselves? You know, that's a very... When we stop blaming everybody else. Yeah, you know, that whole blaming thing, and that's how I actually uh, um, started out. That's how I was actually, you know, that's when I was discovered because I was talking about that, you know, about people blaming everybody for this, you know. Uh, uh, but I think once people stop blaming everyone else for their mistakes i think they will have they'll be open i mean they can see the door to the opportunities like there there's a door mm. op open up that door right there and there's opportunities through that door but you but you can't walk through that door if you always blaming somebody right you know oh i can't do this because it is because of that i used to do it too you know, because I was around a bunch of people that used to blame everybody for everything. So I used to think, well, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any opportunities. I can't do nothing. I'm not even gonna try. They're not even. Gonna, why should I go to school? They're not gonna give me a job because I'm black. So what's the point of going to school? What's the point of doing this? I'm not doing it. You know, no, I'm not applying for that job because they're not gonna give it to me anyway because I'm black. Right. They're, like they're never gonna let me succeed in this country because I'm black. Right. I actually yeah. think that that attitude adjustment is still yes. something like I actually don't think there's a magic remedy. So me having started on the, on the left and and now I'm conservative, some of the things that I s still see that carries over yeah. and I'm talking about just in the community of black conservatism uh -huh. is that we actually have to be better at building relationships. Yeah, building I still relationship, see yeah. that we still have that same toxic mentality yeah. of we don't know how to come together as a community. Yeah. It's we're always in a fight for ourselves. And I was yeah. having this conversation with someone. You want to be said, better than the next. Yeah. As opposed let's, to building. Yes. Let's be great together. Right. We can all, yeah. We can do better together. Like right. let's be, let's be great together. And that's unique you know? about our yes. community. And I, I had wondered, cause you know, I, I'm writing a book and I had wondered if that is something that has been the result of slavery since we never really, we had that breakdown 
a family always, right? In, in during during the times yeah. of slavery, and I I wonder if when the family is broken apart, when black families are broken apart, yeah. well, how are we going to have productive relationships, business yes. relationships? How are we going to help each other build? Yes, I actually had a scenario, and this is a true story. I'm not naming names where I invited you know a bunch of people to be on my podcast. You were one of them. Yes, I canceled on you twice because I had the back in uh whenever when I had like the stomach flu, I canceled on you, and we had to reschedule. We had to yeah. reschedule the podcast yeah. twice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. One of the people that I rescheduled, it was a black woman. She lost her mind on me. I mean, she. I mean, it was just she took it so personally. Started tweeting about me, saying all the stuff. And I yeah. said to myself, "Is this how you think is is a productive way to deal with any sort of uh, business relationship? We have to get better at managing yeah. relationships, or we're never going to get anywhere." Exactly. Things happen. <laughs> Life Things happens. Happen. Yeah. Life happens. Life happens. Come on now. So yeah, that that is totally just ridiculous. Right. You know, but we need to work together. And a lot of people in the black community complain, well, uh, we we need to build our communities. We need to do this. We need to do that. The white man, they're taking over our communities. We need to take our our uh, our community back. Well, how can you do that if you don't want to work together? Mm -hmm. If you want to be better than than the next person instead of being great together, you want to be greater than that person. Because to, but because to be real with you. Uh, if you go to the black community, who owns the liquor store? Uh, who owns the who owns the who owns the uh, laundry mats and the car washes and all in, in the corners and in, in the corner stores? Asians, people from other uh, people, people from India, people from Pakistan, you know. But if blacks came together, y'all put your you put your money together, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you can you can own that corner store. You and uh, several other people can own that corner store and that 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 uh, that that laundry mat or that car wash or whatever. Put your money together, work together, be great together. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah. But people don't want to work together. They want no. I want my own. Mm -hmm. No, I want my own store. I don't want to work with them. No, I'm better than that. I want better than them. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, th I think we really. But do these need other a people, major... they all put their money together and they work together. They build together. Because they not focused on oh I got to be better than you no mm -hmm. yeah I think I think we definitely do need to figure out how to better manage relationships how to better manage emotions and mm -hmm. that is not that's really not a left or right thing yeah. it's just it's it's a Black America thing mm -hmm. um and and we're not going to find success until we learn how to actually build bridges and yeah. not and not building all of these ditches and yeah, stopping exactly. one another from supporting one another and being happy for one another when someone gets ahead and saying how oh how did you do that how can I do that how can I make myself better. Um, exactly. So, so that's sort of my my biggest hope for Black America. On the other side of it, is just being better to one another in general. And, exactly. And it's all about conflict resolution. Exactly. What is your hope for Black America? My hope for Black America mm. is just for Black America to be great, and wake up and realize that they have the same opportunities as everybody else. Amen. That is a great place to end. We wrap every episode. I'm sure you watch, so you already know what I'm going to say. Yes. You're my biggest fan. You get two minutes. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my office. <laughs> You're going to look into this camera, and you are going to leave a video message for the world. Two minutes on the clock. Chris has got it. On your mark, get set world. I give you Terrence K. Williams. I could be on the other side of the ocean right now, but I'm here with Candace Owens. But I should be at home right now, eating fried chicken. But I'm forced to be here to talk to her just because I'm black and she's black, so I have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me stop playing. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Lord Jesus. The ADD, ADHD is coming out of me. But yes, uh, so I'm talking to the camera, right? Uh, so everybody, my name is Terrence K. Williams. Uh, I have some shows coming up. Go to TerrenceKWilliams.com and uh, uh, for tour updates and for new information about what I got going on. And that's two minutes is up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I got off track. I'm sorry. No, that was great. The good I'm thing was great. <laughs> I could be on the other side of the, the ocean, ocean right now. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching the latest episode of The Candace Owens Show. I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. As many of you guys already know, PragerU is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which means we need your help to keep all of our content free to the public. Please consider making a tax-deductible donation today. I would really appreciate your support.